What I have depicted on the screen here is a satellite image which sort of represents the local area around the vehicle. The set of nodes and edges is what we refer to as the lane graph, and it's ultimately what we want to come out of this neural network. We start with a blank slate. We're going to want to make our first prediction here at this green dot. This green dot's position is encoded as an index into a coarse grid which discretizes the 3D world. Now, we don't predict this index directly, because it would be too computationally expensive to do so. There's just too many grid points, and predicting a categorical distribution over this has both implications at training time and test time. So instead, what we do is we discretize the world coarsely first. We predict a heat map over the possible locations, and then we latch in the most probable location. Condition on this, we then refine the prediction and get the precise point. Now, we know where the position of this token is, but we don't know its type. In this case, though, it's the beginning of a new lane. So we predict it as a start token. And because it's a start token, there's no additional attributes in our language. We then take the predictions from this first forward pass, and we encode them using a learned positional embedding, which produces a set of tensors that we can bind together, which is actually the first word in our language of lanes. We add this to the you know, first position in our sentence here. We then continue this process by predicting the next lane point in a similar fashion. Now, this lane point is not the beginning of a new lane. It's actually a continuation of the previous lane. So it's a continuation token type. Now, it's not enough just to know that this lane is connected to the previously predicted lane. We want to encode its precise geometry, which we do by regressing a set of spline coefficients. We then take this lane, we encode it again, and add it as the next word in the sentence. We continue predicting these continuation lanes until we get to the end of the prediction grid. We then move on to a different lane segment. So you can see that cyan dot there. Now, it's, it's not topologically connected to that pink point. It's actually forking off of that, that, per, that blue, sorry, that green point there. So it's got a fork type. And fork tokens actually point back to previous tokens from which the fork originates. So you can see here the fork point predictor is actually the index 0. So it's actually referencing back to tokens that it's already predicted, like you would in language. We continue this process over and over again until we've enumerated all of the tokens in the lane graph. And then the network predicts the end of sentence token. Yeah, I just wanted to note that uh, the, the reason we do this is not just because we want to build something complicated. It almost feels like a Turing complete machine here with neural networks, though, uh, is that we tried simpler approaches, for example, uh, trying to just segment the lanes uh, along the road or something like that. But then the problem is when there's uncertainty. Say you cannot uh, see the road clearly, and there could be two lanes or three lanes, and you can't tell. A simple segmentation-based approach would just draw both of them. It's kind of a 2.5-lane situation. And the post-processing algorithm would hilariously fail uh, when the predictions are such. Yeah, and the problems yeah. don't end there. I mean, you need to predict these connective, like, these connective lanes inside of intersections, which it's just not possible with the approach that Ashok's mentioning, which is why we had to upgrade to this sort yeah, of... Yeah, when it like, overlaps like this, segmentation would just go haywire. But even if you try very hard to you know, put them on separate layers, it's just a really hard problem. But language just offers a really nice framework for more getting a uh, sample from a posterior as opposed to you know, uh, trying to do all of this in post-processing. But this doesn't actually stop for just autopilot, right, John? This can be used for Optimus. Yeah, you know, I guess they wouldn't be called lanes, but you could imagine, you know, sort of in this, you know, stage here, that you might have sort of paths that 